Hello everybody, Tony here at Fisher Buggies in Tampa, Florida. Uh, one of the hottest topics we discuss on the phone is firing order, timing, where you set it, and find a top dead center to make sure your spark plug wire is in the right place. Hopefully today with a couple simple tools and a little time we can show you how to do that. First of all we got to establish what's the firing order and where is it located. The firing order is located on the bottom of the generator stand. It's 1432 with number one cylinder being on the passenger side of the car closest to the firewall. Number two would be closest to the apron on the passenger side of the car. And on the driver's side of the car closest to the firewall is number three cylinder and closest to the apron is number four cylinder. First step we're going to use a standard flat blade screwdriver. We're going to pop the machinery cap off. Just for reference we want to see where the rotor is pointing and helping us determine top dead center. The next step, we're gonna take the valve cover off on the number one, two cylinder, which is on the passenger side of the car. On this motor, we have installed a stock size degree wheel pulley, aluminum pulley. It lists top dead center, bottom dead center, and lets you know where your 32 degree mark is for your advanced timing on the 009 distributor which is a good one to use but if you don't have one you just have a stock pulley we have one here we can show you on the stock pulley going from left to right you have a notch that'll be your top dead center mark the one following it would be where we're going to set the static timing before we mark our 32 degrees on this pulley how we mark our 32 degrees on this pulley is with the protractor from top dead center being zero over to the right on the pulley, 32 degrees. We'll use a chalk line or a marker to make our mark so we know where we're going to set it at. Next we're going to start rolling the motor over clockwise. We're paying attention for top dead center on the bottom pulley to come around or on our stock pulley that we marked. We're waiting for top dead center to pop up here and we want the rotor in the 5 o'clock position. So we're just going to roll it over until we get there. Here comes top dead center. And we're on our mark on the pulley. The rotor looks good. So now we're sitting at what we believe is top dead center number one. But the third check is to double check the valve positioning. Okay, now we're back over to number one cylinder, which is on the right hand side closest to the firewall of the motor. And what we're looking for is both number one exhaust and intake valves are closed, meaning there's, there's free play in it. This is where you'd adjust it if you're going to adjust your valves. But to make sure, the, the thing that's going to let us know for sure is number two exhaust is rocking. We got our pulley at top dead center, rotor at five o'clock, and number two is, is open and rocking. We know we're definitely on number one top dead center. Okay, so you've done the three steps and for some reason your rotor isn't pointing in the 5 o'clock position. It's very common, it's easy to happen, it's just somebody put the distributor drive gear in at a different angle. The way to find top dead center number one, the sure proof way, is top dead center on your pulley and your valve train. Number one, intake and exhaust is closed, means they're rocking, they're, they're loose, and number two, exhaust is pushed in, meaning that valve is open. At that point, when you're there with the pulley and the valves, no matter where that rotor is pointing, that's number one spark plug wire. You need to trace from the right hand side of the car, closest to the firewall, trace that spark plug wire back to the shoe recap, and plug that wire in wherever the rotor is pointing. From there, it's just clockwise. One, four, three, two. That's your firing order. The thing will fire off when you're ready. Now we're going to static time the motor. Static timing is pretty easy, uh, depending on the pulley that you're using. If you're using the aftermarket degree wheel, you'll roll it over to 10 degrees, which is just to the right of top dead center. If you're using the stock pulley, it's that mark from left to right, the second one. The first one was your top dead center, this is your second one, which will be on a stock pulley anywhere from 7 to 10 degrees. We're going to put it in that position, and once we get, once we get everything set up, you loosen up your distributor. You can turn it. 
Doesn't have to be super loose, but just enough to turn it. We get some power here. And what we're looking for, as we turn the sugar, we're looking for the light to just go out. Come back, it's on, just go out. Boop. Now we're in a safe position to lock down the distributor and start the motor. We know it's not advanced, it's not going to be running hot. Okay, if you followed the steps with us so far and you don't have a timing light, then you're safe. The static timing will keep it from being advanced. It's not going to run hot. It should start good. You should be able to drive it without a problem. If you do have a timing light, then we're going to take it a little step further. As you can see, we're using a double nine distributor with centrifugal advance. It doesn't have vacuum on it. And we like to set these at max advance, which is 32 degrees before top dead center. So that we need the timing light. We need the pulley with the 32 degree mark or your stock pulley that we marked with the protractor to 32 degrees before top dead center, which is to the right of the pulley of the top dead center mark. Hook up your timing light. You know how. Red's positive, black clip negative, and make sure you're on number one spark plug wire for the pickup. And we're going to fire this thing up and see where we're sitting. Now before I fire this thing up, you probably won't be able to hear me, let me explain to you what we're going to do. We've got our timing light, we've got our timing mark, which is the case has where they, where they bolt together, and we've got the distributor. And once we fire this motor up, we're just going to look at, see where it is at idle, um, without giving any, any gas, it might be around anywhere from 7 to 10 degrees. And as we accelerate, with the carburetor, as we accelerate, those numbers are going to start to move. Keeping the timing light pointed at the pulley and at the case halves, you'll see those numbers move. As they move and you keep accelerating, eventually the numbers will stop no matter how much more you accelerate. That's max advance. The distributor is done advancing. Wherever that number is, it might be 28, it might be 36. We'll have to turn the distributor, once it comes back down, turn the distributor either advanced or retarded to, to bring the number where we want it. We want it at 32 degrees. about 24 degrees static time. So we need to advance it some to get to 32. So you can hear the RPM pick up. I'll run it up and see if we're at 32 or if we're past 32. Sitting right on my mark. We're at 32 degrees max advance. And we're good to go. Now we got your timing set, you know it's good. Get your ratchet out, get your 10 millimeter on there, tighten that nut back up on the distributor. You don't want it to move anymore. Uh, a lot of people, they'll start popping through the carburetor and snap down the exhaust. It's hard to start, they grab the distributor and start turning on it. Once it's set, it doesn't change. Set it, forget it, leave it alone. You'll stay out of trouble that way. Uh, otherwise, we hope this helps. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out our website, fisherbuggies.com, or give us a call. Uh, you can email us on the website. We got a lot of parts on there. We're adding new stuff every day. Thank you.